I'm Jeff Eichler. And I'm Kirsten Rickert. And we are the hosts of the Getting Unstuck podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Coming up on episode 184 of the House of EdTech podcast, we are going to talk about not using our students as props. I've got a DIY real world hack, House of EdTech VIP, and tech tips to start your school year. Strike up the band. Welcome to the House of EdTech podcast. I am your host, Chris Nessie. The House of EdTech explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. I discuss technology that is changing our classrooms and schools, and I share tools and tips that you can hear today and use tomorrow. You're going to hear the stories of teachers, leaders, and creators just like you. The purpose? Whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way you teach and how your students learn. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another episode of the podcast. We are almost through August 2021. My school year is just a couple of weeks away, and you may have already started, or maybe you're in the same boat that I am. Either way, thanks for making House of Ed Tech a part of your anytime, anywhere professional development. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. If you are new to the program, welcome aboard. I'm so glad you're here. A couple of housekeeping items here at the top of the episode. First, uh, Podcast PD is back. That is another podcast that I host with Stacey Lindis and AJ Bianco. We've been doing it for a couple of years now, and it's dated back to when it used to be a Twitter chat and all that. But we are back with episode 102, which is available now. If you go to podcastpd.com slash go, you can subscribe to the show. And if you want to check out episode 102, that is our latest episode, and that's Tips and Tricks for First Year Teachers, Part 1. We got uh, knee-deep into that episode and realized that the things we wanted to talk about could not be contained in just one episode. So our next episode, Episode 103, as you're listening to this episode, will be coming down the pike very shortly, where we will continue to provide tips and tricks for first year teachers. And if you're subscribed to this and you haven't tried Podcast PD, give it a try. It's a fantastic program. We have a lot of fun doing that podcast and you can actually be a part of it when we record. If you go to podcastpd.com slash live, we record that show live every other Sunday. So uh, connect with us on the socials and all that good stuff. And you'll know when we're recording and you can be a part of the show. It's a lot of fun. And I would love to invite you to be a part of that. And speaking of being a part of stuff, want to quickly talk about the discord community for this podcast. Uh, a while ago, I got fed up with how Facebook was treating me and, you know, how it treats you potentially. So I, a while ago, started a Discord server for the podcast. If you go to chrisnessy.com slash Discord, that's D-I-S-C-O-R-D, you can join our Discord community. What I like about Discord is that it is advertisement free. And there's a great mobile app. You can use it on your desktop. And we are building community on the Discord server. As I'm recording this, we have 80 members in the Discord community. There are a number of channels set up. That is a Discord term that are available for you to facilitate your own conversations. Obviously, I am there and I talk about the episodes. And they actually just added a feature for threaded discussion on topics. So, if you are looking to be a part of a broader ed tech community where uh, it kind of starts with this podcast and can kind of go off in many, many directions related to education and technology and really just whatever you're interested in when you want to connect with other human beings, uh, I would love to have you come over and join the House of Ed Tech Discord community. And again, that's chrisnessy.com slash discord. Normally, I talk about that at the end of the episodes, but Maybe you don't always get to the end of the episode, so there you go. Would love to see you over 
on Discord. Also, want to give a quick shout out to Amy Marquez. She is at Southern Texas Librarian on Twitter, and that's S-O-T-X Librarian on Twitter. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, I put out a tweet challenging people on Twitter who maybe don't listen to the podcast to try it out. Check out the latest episode, go back and listen to a couple of old episodes, uh, even listen to the very first episode. And Amy took the challenge and she let me know on Twitter that she did. So I want to say hello to Amy Marquez. Uh, A little bit about Amy. She is passionate about technology integration and building a lifelong love of learning and literacy. She, again, is a high school librarian and an instructional technology trainer, and her credentials include her MLS in library science. Uh, She is a Google trainer, Microsoft trainer, and an Adobe creative educator, and I want to welcome her to the House of EdTech community and welcome a brand new listener to the podcast. So hello, Amy. Glad you're here. That's all the housekeeping. Let's dive into this episode's EdTech Thought. This episode's EdTech Thought is inspired by the Daring English Teacher on Instagram. You can follow her at the Daring English Teacher on Instagram. And she recently put a post up with a graphic And the graphic said, stop posting students' faces uh, on Instagram. I've adapted the the text of her post uh, to more broadly cover how some educators willy-nilly and freely post student faces on social media in general. So I'm adapting her work. And again, she is at the Daring English Teacher on Instagram. So let's uh, explore this. It's back to school time, and that means that kids are back in classrooms. As teachers, it's not our place to use our students as props in our social media feeds. Our students, these children, and their families are entitled to their privacy. Full stop. Stop posting students' faces on social media if your account is public. If your account is connected to influential content or anything personal. If your account is not explicitly only for district use, and if you do not have parental permission to use their children in your personal business creator account with their understanding of your account. So I think that's very simple and something that we do need To consider Now, there were a lot of comments that were threaded along with this particular Instagram post. Uh, Some people agreed. Some people disagreed. Bottom line is be respectful of your students. Be respectful of your students' families. And don't leverage your students for any type of gain, personal or, you know, private, business, whatever. All right. Uh, we we have uh, a job and a duty to uphold and a certain uh, level of respect that we should have for this profession. So I want to thank the daring English teacher for putting this post out there as a reminder. And it made sense to me and I wanted to share it with you. And that's my ed tech thought. Now for this episode's recommendation, and and this is more of a do-it-yourself fix, and this comes to us from TikTok. That's right, I like to learn on TikTok, and the user I got this from is teacher Emily Nicole, her username is at Emily with two Y's, dot Nicole, N-I-C-H-O-L-E-E, I'm sure that's adapted for social media, as I've never seen Emily spelled with two Y's, although maybe it is. I don't know. But anyway, her little DIY hack for the classroom is about cleaning and bringing new life to an older whiteboard. Not a smart board, not any type of interactive whiteboard, but your quote unquote traditional whiteboard surface. So here's the hack. Number one, clean it as best you can. All right. Use the solution. Get it clean. Get all the shadow and residue off it as best you can. All right. For the harder to clean areas, this is step two. 
clean the areas using a magic eraser. But be warned, do not use a magic eraser on the entire board, as that can ruin the board. So don't go too hard with the magic eraser. And then number three, and this is, I was amazed in, in, in the video, which I will link to in the show notes for this episode out at chrisnessy.com slash 184. Very simply, apply regular old WD-40 with a clean rag to your entire whiteboard surface, almost like you're uh, polishing a car and, and you're just working the WD-40 all over the board. And there you go. And, and your whiteboard will look amazing. And then when you erase, you won't get the shadowy uh, remnants of writing on your whiteboard. And I thought this was really cool. So when I get back to school, I will certainly uh, give my whiteboard the once over with a little WD-40. And if you're still not sure about TikTok for learning, hey, as a teacher, you need to go listen to episode 149 of the podcast. And that is TikTok in education for educators out at chrisnessy.com slash 149. Thank you to Emily Nicole for sharing that little tip and trick on TikTok. And that's my EdTech recommendation. Today, I want to talk about some tech tips to start the school year. Starting the school year can be an exciting time for you, for me, for students, Everybody's kind of excited for school to start, regardless of what the world is. And I think back to when I was a kid and there was that commercial for, I think, maybe Staples or Office Max, where it talked about going back to school being the most wonderful time of the year. And they played the holiday song, the whole the whole thing. All right. Um, but if you're like many teachers, you devoted your summer to preparing for the year ahead or like me, parts of your summer. After the year that I've had, and, and probably you as well, we needed to relax. But anyway, uh, part of that preparation includes lesson planning and potentially getting your classroom ready. But how we use technology and the role that technology plays is only getting stronger. So here are a couple of tips to consider and employ as you get started. And if you're not listening to this episode at the very start of the school year, it's never too late to implement some great tips into your workflow. All right. So the five tips that I'm going to share, and then I'll go into a little bit of detail. Number one, make friends with the tech team at your school and in your district. Number two, learn how to use new features in your learning management system. Number three, write down your passwords. Number four, try one new app or one new strategy. And number five, be intentional about reflecting. Let's go back to the top here. So our first, making friends with the tech team at your school and your district. The tech experts are your best resource when something goes wrong with any of your devices. Besides, you may still need help remembering your passwords too. So be kind to these people. Be respectful of their time. When you see a tech guy or a tech gal in the hallway, don't stop them in the hallway and unload your technology problem on them because they are very busy, especially if your school, if your school doesn't have a tech person, hey, super sorry about that. Every school should have at least one person. But the problem is a lot of schools only have that one person in an official role who can actually get certain things done. So be respectful of their time. Send them an email. Um, treat them nice at the holiday time, but just be super nice to them. All right. They're doing the best that they can. Number two, learn how to use new features in your learning management system. It doesn't matter which LMS you use, Schoology, Edmodo, Blackboard, Canvas, Google Classroom, doesn't matter. Okay. Between when you left school and when you're returning to school, you never know if your learning management system may have gotten some love and gotten some updates or upgrades since the last time you logged in. Read any articles, watch any videos that are available to get yourself and perhaps your students comfortable with new features. One thing I like to do in my classroom is kind of peer over the shoulder of students to get that student perspective. 
I, I, I say that as a Google Classroom user where, yes, there are some similarities between what I see as the teacher and what my students see for themselves. But sometimes you do need to go actually look at a student's screen to see what they see. And certainly that can be very helpful when helping them navigate any new features or functionality in the learning management system. Number three, uh, more of a analog tip, write down your passwords. You have access to a variety of ed tech programs, many of which require unique passwords. As always, I caution you, avoid the temptation of using the same password for every login. Also, take advantage of having your browser store your passwords or even generating your passwords. But that being said, go into, if you're a Google Chrome user, let's say, go into passwords and you may want to print out a, a page with all of the passwords. So you've got them written down because you just never know, especially with those long convoluted passwords. If you're having the browser make up your password, certainly consider that. And I know Derek Larson will be listening and will like to recommend a password manager. So go out and find a password manager if that's your thing as well. But in an emergency, it never hurts to have a written down backup copy of your valuable passwords. Number four, try one new app and or one new strategy. If you're anything like me, you're constantly learning through your PLN. You're learning through social media. You are learning by attending conferences as they start to return in person, many still taking place virtually at the time of this recording. And you're also learning through podcasts. Hello. Thank you for learning through a podcast. This type of learning inundates you with new ideas and strategies. My advice, don't try to implement too many new ideas, apps, or strategies all at the same time. Start slow. Let me repeat that. Start slow. Implement one thing at a time. Reach out to your tech coaches if they're available for support. Once you and your students are comfortable, try another. That, 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 that's the advice. Try one thing at a time. For me, I try one thing at a time because then if something goes wrong, I know to focus in and this will lead me into my next tool, not tool, uh, my next tip about being reflective, okay? Which is number five, be intentional about reflecting, the effective educator is the reflective educator. And I've said that before. I've said it for years, and I will continue to say that. Reflection is important for you. The more you reflect on your practice, the better educator you will become each day. Take a few minutes. Try blogging, journaling, or even just take five minutes and just have quiet time to decompress let your imagination go, relax your mind, close your eyes, breathe, be, be relaxed. I, I don't know how, how, how much uh, differently I can say it, but the important piece is to be reflective and, and think a little bit about what you've done, what you're going to do and how you can do it better. So again, five tech tips to start the school year. Again, we talked about making friends with your school or district's tech team. We talked about learning how to use new features in your LMS. I advise you to write down your passwords. Only consider trying one new app or strategy at a time. Don't go crazy. And again, the last one, be reflective. For me, that, that's partly making this podcast to, to be reflective of my own practice. So those are the five tips. If you have additional tips or a thought about using technology at the start of the school year, or really anytime, go to chrisnessy.com slash 184. Leave a comment on the show notes. You could send an email to feedback at chrisnessy.com or tag me in a comment and share your thoughts on Twitter. Don't forget to use hashtag House of Ed Tech. This is the just give it a try portion of the show, and I want to take a couple of seconds here to remind you that I'm trying something a little different with just give it a try, where I want to do like a question of the month type of uh, feature here, where I will give a direct pointed question that I will feature in an upcoming episode with hopefully your responses 
and my thoughts on the question as well. And the question I want to use in September is, what are you looking forward to trying in the coming months in your classroom or at your school? Could be tech-related, could not be tech-related. It's up to you. It's an open-ended type question. But I need your response by Friday, August 27th. I've already gotten one response, and hopefully I've created enough opportunity where you can listen to episode 183, where I first mentioned this, and now again in this episode, and hopefully you're hearing this before Friday, August 27th, and you get me your thoughts on this question again. What are you looking forward to trying in the coming months in your classroom or school? If you go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback, you can send me an email. There's also a button that you can click on the side of any page on chrisnessy.com, and you can leave a voicemail. You could also email some audio to feedback at chrisnessy.com. You can call the House of Ed Tech hotline that's actually in the show notes here on your app. You can actually click the phone number and you can call and leave a voicemail. That's super cool because this is an audio podcast and I would love to have audio to share. And certainly, as always, if you send me text, you take your chances with how my impression of you will sound. (laughs) But I will be respectful, of course. So get me your thoughts. What are you looking forward to trying in the coming months in your classroom or school here at the start of the school year? And if you're listening to this episode after August 27th, and I've already done the episode where I share the responses, who cares? Send me your thoughts anyway. I can always include it in a future episode, and I would be happy to do that. And no episode of the House of Ed Tech is complete until we meet the House of Ed Tech VIP. This episode's VIP is Lena Saleh, the Ed Tech Guru. Lena is a former educator with more than 10 years of classroom experience and is extremely passionate about the world of technology and how it transfers into the classroom to make our students workforce ready. She believes that providing students the skills for our future is absolutely vital and is important to creating a more equitable opportunity for all students. She also believes that exposure creates opportunity. Lena has worked with hundreds of educators, thought leaders, and ed tech companies, guiding them through this next era of education. The best place to consume her content is YouTube, where she explores hot topics in the world of education, tech tips, and even a bit of career guidance. You can also connect with Lena on Twitter. She is at Lena Marie Saleh, and I'll link to that in the show notes. And I'll also link to her link tree, which is a nice portal of links to all of her content. And that is link tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is one of those funny URLs. Uh, linktr.ee slash Lena Marie Saleh. And again, links to both of those will be in the show notes for this episode at chrisnessy.com slash 184. And on your podcatcher, Overcast or Apple Podcast or wherever you listen, you should be able to somehow swipe left or up and get to the notes for this and the links will be there. But congratulations, Lena, you are a House of Ed Tech VIP. Thank you for listening to this episode of the House of Ed Tech podcast. I appreciate bringing you these thoughts every couple of weeks, and I'd love to keep the conversation going. I want to connect with you I want to hear your thoughts on the information and the things that I share in this episode and every episode. So for this one, again, go out to chrisnessy.com slash 184 or go to chrisnessy.com slash feedback and you can send an email or again on the right hand side of the website, you can click that send me a voicemail button. I would love to get your voice messages. If you enjoy the House of Ed Tech, a couple of things you can do. Number one, and this is the most important call to action tell somebody else about the podcast. Tell them face-to-face. Share it on social media. If you're the person who sends out the tech emails in your school, include a link to the podcast or your favorite episodes. Spreading a podcast via word of mouth is the best way to share a podcast you love. Number two, you could also become an awesome supporter. Super thank you to my awesome supporters, Anthony Arnaud from the STEM Class Podcast, Dan Gallagher, from gallagertech.edublogs.org, Carlos Garza, 
He's the host of the Ace Tech Podcast. Peggy George. She is at P. George on Twitter. Jeff Herb, at Jeff Herb. Mike Messner, at Messner underscore Mike on Twitter. Matt Miller, you know who Matt Miller is. He's the author of Ditch That Textbook and all of the other ditch books out there. J.P. Prezavento. Find all of the things J.P. Prezavento on his website, jpprez.com. Patty Reefus, at PGR Teaches. Lori Simpson, at North L. Simpson. And of course, Kyle Wilcox at Level Up Ed Tech on Twitter. Thank you to all of you for your support. If you'd love to become an awesome supporter, it's super easy. Go to chrisnessy.com slash awesome. And the third thing you can do, I have a new page on the website set up for all of the companies I have a relationship with. So if you go through my sponsors page, which is chrisnessy.com slash sponsors, If you go through and you sign up for site services, do any shopping, you get what you need. And a lot of those companies give me a little something in return. So that's a great way to help support the podcast as well. The next episode is 185, and that's going to come your way on September 5th, 2021. Again, I hope to have those just give it a try responses in there. So make sure you get them to me until next time. Thank you for learning with me. And remember... Using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Hey, you're still here. So, don't forget about that just give it a try question. What are you looking forward to trying in the coming months in your classroom or school? chrisnessy.com slash feedback. See you next time.